How's it going guys? It's Matt here or MJ Feldy and today I have a video for you guys that I never thought I would ever be making but I have a comparison between all three Imperial Star Destroyers that I have in my collection. So first starting off down here with the 2014 version. This had about 1300 pieces and retailed for $130. Uh, it's a pretty good set you know for play scale and it actually does have an interior and actually it has a handle right here which is really nice for picking it up and swooshing it around so that's really nice and then like I said this comes off and these panels fold down and there's a full interior on the inside and this is the only one that I have in my collection that actually has an interior I think there was one other Star Destroyer that was released in like 2007 that also had an interior, but uh, the UCS one does not have an interior. The uh, parts of the Super Center do come off and then there's like a handle on the inside that you can grab, but there's no interior. But uh, this Playscale version, of course being Playscale, um, there is an interior with a lot of minifigures there as you can see, but um, it is definitely very small compared to the UCS version as well as my custom version over there but you know for 130 bucks and you know being play scale it's not too bad of a set and there are some spring-loaded shooters right here that you know you can fire off and you know battle against your x-wings or um, whatever you happen to have but uh, yeah a lot of cool play functions in this set there's also these turrets right here and there's a little knob that you can pull forward and backward to have the turrets move forward and backward so that's a really cool function as well that works on both sides and then the bridge is pretty uh proportionally accurate to the rest of the size of this star destroyer it has some sticker detailing there for the bridge and then these smaller little dome pieces um, for the top also in the back here there are all of the engines uh it looks pretty sparse though because you just see um, some dark gray bricks and slopes and stuff in the background with some technic so it doesn't look too pretty but you know you do still have all of the engines back here and then in this back like little neck section of the bridge you can lift this up and there's some extra spring-loaded shooters right here so you know that's a pretty cool function as well but yeah overall when i was a kid i absolutely loved this set and it was one of my favorites. I had loved the way that the interior opened up and uh, you know, of course, all of the minifigures that you get and you get two stormtroopers, so it's really awesome. Um, but yeah, overall, a really good play scale set. Next up over here is the UCS Star Destroyer. This one I built right before I went to Brick Days Omaha to display with my Star Destroyer, just for a little size comparison, I thought that would be pretty cool. One of the most noticeable things on this Star Destroyer that we wanted to fix on our custom one was this gap going all the way down the middle. And a lot of the pictures of the UCS Star Destroyer and also on the box, they sort of have it at an angle like this so you can barely see the gap. But there is a pretty significant gap going down the entire center of the Star Destroyer, which is pretty unfortunate. I mean, they could have easily fixed that just by um, placing these wedge plates just like half a stud off like they are right here as well as right here to fill in that gap a little bit more. But I mean, maybe they tried that out and there was just no way to make that still structurally stable um, using that technique. I don't really know. But that was the main thing that we wanted to fix on our version of the Star Destroyer because as you can see, there is pretty minimal of a gap on ours, but nonetheless, uh, this is a pretty good model for a Lego set. Once again, this set retails for $700 and has around 4,700 pieces. And you can't really do a price per part on bigger sets like this, especially since, you know, there's a bunch of these giant panels and plates and all that stuff that would usually go for around $4 per piece on BrickLink. And this set came with like, I think 16 of those like 16 by 16 plates. So, I mean, you can't really do price per part because there's so many just 
massive pieces in this set. But overall, I really like this set, and I think 700 bucks isn't too bad of a price. I think maybe like 600 or 650 would be an even better deal, but I mean, for what you're getting, it's like 43 inches long, so that's still a pretty substantial amount of space, and you know, it's a really good looking model as well. On the sides, you also have this little overhang with tons of greebling on either side, and then you also have some little ball turrets right here, which I'm not 100% sure if these are accurate to the actual Star Destroyer or if they just added them for sort of a little play function, but not really too sure about that. And then same thing on the other side, lots of greebling, and this greebling was actually duplicated, so you build the entire side of the Star Destroyer twice, and then um, for the other side you just flip it over, so it's the exact same greebling that you build twice. And then you also get this miniature Tantive four, which is pretty cool and uh, actually scales perfectly with this Star Destroyer. But yeah, I really enjoyed the build for this. It was, it was really cool. And then also you can dock this um, Tantive four inside of the hangar. There's also a miniature TIE Fighter that you get right here. I had to take the TIE Fighter out, but yeah, you can dock the Tantive four in there, which is super cool. I absolutely love that feature um, and then it's you know pretty easy to just take it out just like that so yeah and then the inside of the hangar looks really nice I really like those curved um, tiles there they look really awesome and just make the hangar look super accurate to what you see in the movies and these bottom plates right here are pretty much just studded there's not really a whole lot of detail or anything which is fine because you're not really going to be seeing the bottom of it. And then you also have the sensor dish down here, which looks pretty good as well. And of course, you got the plaque that says Devastator and your two minifigures right here with dual molded legs. So that's pretty cool. And then the other minifigure here with printed arms. So it's pretty cool that you at least get a couple minifigures. And then also I wanted to just take a quick look at the stand right here. It's pretty simplistic and I really like um, these Technic pieces right here that uh, hold up the Star Destroyer. And then, you know, the base is pretty simple. Um, it's just pretty much a plate and brick build. And then, you know, you have these Technic pieces that connect up into the center of the Star Destroyer. But one thing, I mean, this probably won't be an issue for any of you guys that potentially want to get this set or have this set. But I transported this set in a car for about 30 minutes and this stand isn't super stable. It kind of wobbles a little bit like that, which is kind of funny because like it doesn't wobble side to side like at all. It just wobbles forward to back. In my Star Destroyer, it doesn't wobble forward or back. It just wobbles side to side. So that's that's kind of a funny thing there. but. Um, in the car, we hit a couple bumps and like the Star Destroyer came off from the stand because these Technic pieces right here are only connected in with studs, like that's literally it. And then there's a couple of these uh, like one by two modified plates with like the bars sticking straight up that connect into here, but it's not a super like stable connection at all. Like it works if you're just like picking this thing up and carrying it somewhere else, but if you have it like in a car and you hit a couple bumps, it will definitely come off. So that was kind of scary, and I had to like hold the center of the Star Destroyer the rest of the ride. So that was pretty stressful, but I'm sure none of you guys are gonna be transporting this in a car or anything like that, or if you do, you'll do it a lot carefully than I did, um, but just something that I wanted to point out. But then also on this Star Destroyer, we have all of the laser cannons here, and this is accurate to the Devastator, which is the first Star Destroyer you see in A New Hope, but it has this different laser cannon here in the back, and then the three up front are the same, but these can spin around a full 360 degrees, and I really like the build for these as well. And then there's a lot of greebling and stuff for the race section. I think the race section, or the super center, looks super great on this model. And then there's also some more details towards the back, as well as this next section that goes up to the bridge. And then same thing on this other side, you got the four laser cannons there, and then lots of greebling on the sides of the super center. And then up here, the bridge, I think 
Um, like the way that all of the panels come together is super good. Like there's almost no gaps anywhere in the bridge. And then actually on the UCS model, they used the same dome pieces for the shield generators that we used on our custom one over here. So uh, that's pretty cool as well. And then the sensor dish right here, I watched the Lego designer video on the UCS Star Destroyer and they said that um, since in some scenes you see the Star Destroyer with the sensor dish up like this and in other scenes you see it down like that, then they just made this a little function so you can have either version of the Star Destroyer with the sensor dish up or down. So that's pretty cool. I think that all of the Imperial One class Star Destroyers, so all the Star Destroyers that you see in Star Wars A New Hope have this sensor dish orientated like this and then all of the Imperial II class Star Destroyers, so all of the ones that you see mainly in Empire Strikes Back, the sensor dish looks like this. So um, the Imperial II class Star Destroyer is what we based ours off of for our custom Star Destroyer. As you can see, we have the sensor dish like that as well. But yeah, it's a pretty cool function that you can make this Star Destroyer the Imperial 1 or Imperial 2 class Star Destroyer because that's one of the main noticeable differences between the two classes of Star Destroyer besides like the turrets and stuff like that. But yeah, there's some small differences between each class of Star Destroyer, but the sensor dish is one of the main ones. Also, the back engines on the UCS set look super good. I love the trans blue pieces that they use to uh, make the thrust there on all of the engines and also like all of these plates and panels and stuff just come together so nicely on all of the edges right here. It just looks super good. Also something that's pretty funny is I actually use these exact same like half uh, cone pieces or whatever you want to call them. They're used on the cockpit of the UCS Millennium Falcon as well but I use those same pieces on my engines over here. But I just use this border of these like hinge pieces just to give it that illusion of how big it actually is. Um, but I use those exact same pieces. Also, these pieces right here are technically not an illegal building technique. They legalized this back in the shield helicarrier set. They used this technique for the computer screens and stuff like that. So technically not an illegal building technique, but I really like the look of that. It looks super accurate to what you see in the movies. Also, carrying this thing is super easy. So basically, all you do is take off these front two sections of the super center. They just uh, stud in with these two little like Technic pins right here. There's one right here and then one connected to the other section of the super center but then you can just take both of these off. And then right here, there's a little handle. It's just like pretty much all Technic and you can just pick it up. It's a little bit back heavy, but it's definitely a super easy way to actually pick up the Star Destroyer. And if you really want to, you can take off uh, these other two sections right here. But I will say that the structure of this Star Destroyer is beyond anything I could ever do. It is so incredibly strong and like, I wish I had these pieces right here to build my frame. Like it would have been so much easier and just like the way that everything comes together, like all of the plating, how that's all attached to it is just super genius. And this entire thing is just so structurally stable. It's incredible. But yeah, let me take these other two sections of the super center off real quick, just so you can get a better look at the interior structure. Also, another really interesting technique is that these two back sections of the Super Center are literally just attached with these white poles right here, and they just fit right in to these yellow pieces. So another really interesting technique, but it really works and makes the gap at the top like pretty seamless. So that's a really cool technique that I never thought they would use in a Lego set, but here we are. But yeah, from this angle, you can see all of the crazy Technic building techniques that you see in here. I've never built this much Technic in a Lego Star Wars set before, but I mean, honestly, I don't really like Technic, but this build was, I mean, pretty much self-explanatory. It wasn't too bad because a lot of these pieces are, you know, pretty large. So it wasn't too bad of a building experience with Technic, but yeah, it is super strong. It's super stable. You can literally just grab it from right here and just pick the whole thing up. It is super, super stable and you don't have to worry about anything coming off or 
you know, the entire structural frame just collapsing like mine did. Um, but it it's incredible. Like, good job, Lego, for making this. I have no idea how people design all of this crazy Technic stuff, but it is so stable and works so well, it, it's perfect. But yeah, that's the UCS Star Destroyer for you guys. Overall, I really like this set. I actually thought about selling it before I, you know, built the whole thing, but after building it, it was a super great building experience, and I just really like it. And it's definitely a lot easier to display than my massive five foot three Star Destroyer over here. So I, I'm gonna end up keeping it. It's really cool. And I especially really like displaying it next to my Star Destroyer. It's it's just a really cool display piece. But now on to our big boy, the five foot three Star Destroyer right here. You can just see the sheer size comparison between this one, the UCS one, and then all the way down to the tiny little play scale one. It's just such a cool like progression, just going down from the size comparison. It'd be really cool to make different custom Star Destroyers at each scale, um, maybe a project for the future. As you guys probably know from watching all of my update videos and the finale and the cinematic video, but there's just so much detail and greebling packed into every little crevice of the Star Destroyer. And then on this side as well, there's just so many, you know, piping details and just random greebling and stuff like that. And then I also decided to add this little miniature battle between a TIE fighter and an X-Wing right here. So uh, that's pretty cool. I really wanna make more of these X-Wings right here but I can't find any more of these one by one clip pieces in my collection. So maybe I'll have to make another Bricklink order and make a bunch of miniature X-Wings, but I really like the way these X-Wings look. So what's really cool about making this video is that this Star Destroyer right here, the UCS one actually inspired us to build this Star Destroyer. And like this model is really good, don't get me wrong. It's a great set, but there were just some little things here and there that we thought we could make a little bit better in our model, especially this gap in the middle that we fixed right here. Literally all it is is um, these two plates on the top that you know come together in the center. They basically just rest onto the frame of the Star Destroyer and they're held in to the sides with these Technic pieces on the inside. So they literally just rest there. I mean, obviously in a Lego set, you wouldn't be able to do anything like that because they have their own you know, structural standards and go through all of these tests and stuff to make sure that it's easy to build for pretty much anybody who buys the set and stuff like that. So, you know, obviously they couldn't have done anything as crazy as this. We used a lot of really sketchy techniques and stuff to achieve all of these really weird angles and um, like, almost no gap at the front here. But that was one of the main things that we wanted to fix on our model, as well as just the size. Um, we felt like, you know, just a giant Star Destroyer would be super cool as well. My buddy Josh actually wanted to make an eight foot Star Destroyer when we were originally planning for this mock, but you know, we actually figured out how long eight feet would be. And we were like, nah, that is way too big. And five feet was, was even a challenge, but um, we decided at this scale. And overall, I think it was a pretty good scale to work with. Like it wasn't too enormously big and it wasn't too small. Nonetheless, I think it was a pretty good scale to work with. And because of this scale, I had to redesign the bridge like nine times. I had to redo it like three different times because it was too small. And then also, you know, it got knocked over, destroyed accidentally, but Overall, I think what we went with is a pretty good design. You can just see all of the depth in the bridge there, which looks super awesome. And I mean, overall, I'm super happy with the way that it turned out and I'm not touching this thing again. Um, but yeah, super happy with the way it turned out. And then like I've said in you know the finale video and previous Star Destroyer mock update videos, all of this that you see on the top of the Star Destroyer can actually come off. I actually take everything off in my finale video. So I'll have that linked up here in the top right corner if you guys wanna check that out as well. But it takes about like 
10-15 minutes to take everything off. So it's not like a super painful process, but I'm really happy that we made everything come apart modularly like that. So like it wasn't easy taking this to Nebraska Brick Days, but it was a lot easier of a process with everything able to uh, come off modularly like that. So um, that was a really nice process. And you know, we originally um, when taking it there, we didn't want to take off or I didn't want to take off any of the bottom plating because it's a super huge pain in the butt to, uh, you know, take off and attach and stuff like that so i just wanted to leave it all on but one of the bottom plates fell when we were transporting it to the convention so we just decided to take the bottom plates off and then reattach them when we got there and then after the convention when we took this back to my house um, we decided to take the bottom plates off again and it was a way easier process to uh you know just take all the bottom plates off as well because then the frame is a lot lighter and a lot easier to carry. So we learned from that mistake, taking it back, and it was a lot smoother coming back. But yeah, it was a super cool experience being at Nebraska Brick Days as well. Got to meet a lot of cool people. Uh, even got interviewed by Beyond the Brick, so that was a super awesome experience. But yeah, also with our Star Destroyer, we wanted to have a good mix of tiles and studs, just so like when you look at it from a distance, you think that it's like one of the models from the movies and is not even Lego. And then as you get closer, you sort of see the studs pop up and you're like, oh dang, this is actually made out of Legos. But um, like the UCS model has a lot of studs on it, obviously because you know it's a Lego set and they like to have a lot of studs on their models just so you know that it's Lego. And I've seen a lot of mocks before that literally just have it all tiled. And I don't really like that look because you can't even tell that it's a Lego model, which is kind of the whole purpose of building a giant Lego Star Destroyer. So I wanted to have at least some studs on here, and I think we did a pretty good job of, you know, varying that up with the texture of the Star Destroyer. And then, like I said, all of these sections of the Super Center right here can come apart. And I was really happy with how we achieved um, this right here. There's, it's literally seamless, this gap right here between these two plates, it, it just, I'm super happy with how that turned out. And then just all of this greebling and stuff. I was really worried that we were gonna run out of greebling, um, especially for this back part, because right here, um, this was the last part that we built of the Star Destroyer. And we were able to, you know, find enough greebling pieces and scrap up enough pieces to, you know, make this look somewhat decent um, without making a brick link order, because that just would have been terrible. Would have had to wait a whole nother week just to finish this thing, but. I'm really glad that I had enough pieces. And then of course we have the back engines. I decided not to go with any like trans blue pieces for um, the engine thrusts or anything like that. I just wanted it to, you know, look like an actual model from one of the movies, um, which I think looks pretty good. And then there's just a ton of greebling details and stuff like that. I actually got this idea with all the hinge pieces around the uh, larger engines from Brick Vault. That was a super genius idea, so I decided to go ahead and use that on mine. And then, um, you know, just all of these random details right here. We tried to get it as accurate as we could just from looking at reference pictures online and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how the engines turned out as well. And then here's a quick look at the stand of our Star Destroyer. It's only like six studs wide for either post. Um, we tried to make it as sleek and as minimal as possible just so it doesn't give away too much from the actual star destroyer but building it that small also comes at a cost and this thing is not super stable at all it wobbles side to side a lot even if you're just moving the tiniest little bit of greebling or something on the top it will wobble a little bit but overall i really like the design for this base right here it's just super sleek and i had to order a ton of black tiles for this it was crazy um but i think it's around like 200 or maybe a little bit more tiles that i uh, used for this stand so yeah it was way bigger than i thought it was gonna be and it doesn't even look that big compared to uh the star destroyer but also down here the sensor dish i was super happy with how this turned out as well um it it's literally just connected up into the center of the Star Destroyer with two Technic pins. So once again, it's pretty sketchy and not the most stable, but I'm really happy with how that turned out. 
All right, and then I just wanted to give you guys a quick size comparison of the Tantive 4 from the UCS Star Destroyer versus the one from my Star Destroyer. I actually got the idea to build this particular version of the Tantive 4 from some guy on Instagram. I'll have him linked in the description below, but it was super cool. So I tried the best I could to recreate his version of the miniature Tantive 4, and I think I did a pretty good job. Mine definitely isn't as stable, I'm sure, but I tried to get the overall look that he went with because it just looks super great. Um, but yeah, as you can see, pretty big difference there, especially with like the head right here compared to this one. Uh, it's just it's just crazy. But we used the same piece for uh, the sensor dish, so that's something right there. But yeah, I mean, I really like this miniature version. It's pretty simple and just really tiny. I, I really like it, um, the overall design. And then, you know, this one is obviously a lot chunkier and, uh, you know, obviously bigger. But yeah, just wanted to give you guys a quick size comparison of these two. Something that I thought would be kind of interesting to do is to measure the length of all of the bridges of each of these Star Destroyers to the length of all of them, just to see how proportional they are um, compared to each other. And so for the UCS one, the bridge is eight inches long, and then the length is 43 inches. So uh, those two divided by each other is 0.186. And then the play scale one is 4.5 inches for the bridge and then the entire length is 20 inches, and then those divided by each other is 0.225, and then our custom one that we built over here, the bridge is 10 inches long, and then the entire thing is around 62 inches long, and so those divided by each other is 0.181. So actually, surprisingly enough, the proportionality from the UCS bridge to the length of it and then our bridge to the length of ours is actually closer it's literally only 0 0.005 away from each other for being proportional i was super surprised because i thought for sure that the bridge for the play scale one like the proportionality from the bridge to the length was going to be closer to ours right here but actually it's the ucs one so i was really surprised by that um, as you can see, the play scale one is 0.225. So yeah, that was pretty interesting to find out. I just thought that would be a cool little thing to do just to see how proportional everything is with the Star Destroyers and how accurate they are to each other. Thank you guys so much for watching this comparison video. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this comparison of all of these different models. Please make sure to give this video a like down below. And also if you're new to my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps my channel out. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.